Fiona ready for our music movement session this week. I really hope that you're all doing well at home or some of you are, who are in school. We're thinking of you and thinking of you all getting through this strange time. So today for our lesson we're going to be in a new continent. Okay now if you're in reception you might have been learning about this continent this week so you might already know where we are for our music movement lesson. For those of you who don't I'm going to give you some clues as to where we're going to be today. Okay, the first clue. This is the continent that has the world's largest waterfall called the Angel Falls. So that's one fact. This continent also has the world's largest mountain range, the Andes. Okay, so it's got the world's largest waterfall called the Angel Falls. It's got the world's largest mountain range called the Andes. And if that wasn't big enough, it's got the world's largest river basin, the Amazon River Basin. Okay, so three clues. Has anybody at home found out which continent we're in? Which of our seven continents are we in today? So let's recap those. It's got the world's largest waterfall. It's got the world's largest mountain range and it's got the world's largest river basin. Now if you haven't already got it, another big clue about this continent is that it has what is considered to be the world's biggest carnival called the Rio de Janeiro Carnival. Do you know which continent we're in? If it's the Rio de Janeiro Carnival, we are in South America. South America is the continent with the world's largest waterfall, the world's largest mountain range, the world's largest river basin, and what's considered to be the biggest carnival in the world. Okay? so. South America. Should we start with our rhythm track and have a look at what's in my magic basket today of instruments for our rhythm? Okay. Oh. Well, at least there's something in here this week. But what is in here is a lot of strange things. I've got a water bottle and another water bottle, but this one's made of metal. And this one's made of glass. Strange. I've got hmm, an old tube that used to contain some vitamin drink tablets. Hmm, very strange. Oh, I've got an old bubble pot that my son used to have his bubbles in. Hmm. I've got a pen lid. I don't even know what this is. It looks like it could be a part to something. And I've got a metal straw. Oh, no instruments in there. Or is there? Because in South America, one of the traditional instruments is called a zampogna. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. A zampogna. Okay? And it is a type of pan pipe, a type of pan flute. It's made up of lots and lots and lots of cylinders. Okay, which is a tube almost, um, open at both ends, a cylinder. Okay, and what they do is they blow into their pan pipes. They blow into them. Now, at home, you can find lots of different cylinders or bottles, basically any long tubey shape and if they're open at both ends like the straw is open at this end and at this end okay if it's open at both ends great because the air can come out if not if it's like a bottle that's fine it still makes a wonderful noise and that's what they would use they would use their mouths and they would use the air within that within that um, cylinder to make the sound so, you can get all sorts of sounds. May 
amazing, isn't it? Just from these little things I found at home. Such different sounds, aren't they? I like that one. That's the glass one. That might be the glass that you can hear. Another unusual sound. And they change even when you move the angle of them. Let's try this funny little thing. It's like a little high pitched sound, isn't it? Okay, so I'm gonna take my cylinders and my bottles and I am going to play our first track. If you would like to find some things that you could try and make a pan flute sound with, a uh, sampanya sound with, then now is the time to pause the video here and go and see what you can find around your house. Some empty tubes, some empty bottles, maybe someone can show you the recycling. If they're glass, please be careful with them. I have a carpet um, which will help, help the fall if the glass breaks. If you want to use something like glass, maybe ask somebody at home just to keep an eye on you. Okay, make sure you're using safe and clean equipment. All right, I'm gonna get our music ready, you get your instruments ready. Okay, are we all ready? Fantastic. Okay. I'm gonna try this one first. Can you hear that? That's the Samponia. So that was our first rhythm track. I'm just going to put these out of the way. Now, for our first South American animal. Okay, this is a wonderful creature. I'm going to give you some clues and see if you can guess it. The first clue I'm going to give you to our first animal is that they are tree-dwelling animals. Now that means that they live in the trees, they dwell in the trees, okay? In fact, they are pretty much never found on the ground. It's not safe for them to be on the ground, okay? Now it's not safe for this animal to be on the ground because it is so slow moving that if a predator came, it wouldn't be able to get away quick enough. And when I say it's very slow moving, I don't just mean it's a bit slow, okay? So you might be picturing something like a turtle in your head or a tortoise, okay, a snail. This animal is probably the slowest animal in the world, <laughs> okay? This animal moves not just slowly, it moves so 
slowly. Okay, which is why it spends pretty much its whole life in trees. In fact, it only probably comes down from a tree once a week. The rest of the time it's up in the trees. Okay, now this animal also has very, very long, sharp claws. Now you're looking at my hand, you can look at your hand, and you've probably got one, two, three, four, five fingers, if you include your thumb, on your hand. This animal wouldn't have five fingers with five claws. This animal would have three fingers. Three fingers, three toes, and three toes, unless it's a two-toe, two-fingered type of this animal. But most of them have three fingers and three toes. <laughs> wow, okay, with very sharp claws on all of those, okay? Their very sharp claws are what help them protect themselves. So they're very slow moving. They spend most of their lives in trees, okay? And they are incredible incredibly, incredibly sharp with their claws, okay? The last clue is that they eat lots of leaves and they eat pretty much only leaves. And you'd have probably guessed it, but to actually digest their leaves is also very, very, very slow. <laughs> okay, I can't put any more emphasis on the word slow. Do you know which animal we're going to be? They're not tiny and they're not big. To give you an idea, they're about medium sized. Okay, they're about like this. They, they range, but they're mostly about this size. Okay, we are going to be a sloth. Okay, now a sloth hangs out in the trees. It's a mammal that has arms and legs with very sharp claws, remember, and it holds on to parts of the tree, okay? It sometimes sits on the tree, but to move, it moves very, very slowly, okay? Now, it's not just its arms and legs moving that's slow. Everything. Even blinking their eyes is very, very slow. Okay, so I want to see if you can move across the room like a sloth. Okay, so. You have to think about your very sharp claws gripping the tree, the branch of the tree, okay? You're not on the ground. And I want you to think about everything you do, the movement of your lips, of your eyes. So if you think you need to blink, try and blink as slow as you can. The movement of your fingers, your hands, your arms and your legs and your body. Okay, we're going to listen to our first track and we're going to be a sloth moving from one side of the room to the other. Okay, are you ready?
tricky, isn't it? to come across in the water okay so that's our first clue this animal lives in the water it's actually usually found in the Amazon River in um, South America okay now if you were wading your feet in the water if you were paddling in the river okay you would not want to come across a big group of this type of fish okay it's a type of fish Okay, it's a fish that lives in the Amazon River that is incredibly fierce. Okay, you don't often think of fish of being fierce, do you? Especially not fish about this size. Okay, but these fish have such sharp teeth and such a strong bite. In fact, their bite is as big and strong that that of a shark can be. Okay, now the other scary thing I'm afraid to say about this fish is that they like to eat meat. They don't eat humans, okay? They'd have to be absolutely starving hungry, which they aren't usually to need to do that. They don't eat humans, but they will eat other fish. They will eat the, the animals that have maybe fallen into the river, okay? And the, the way that they do that, being only so little, is that they do it in groups, okay? So they attack in groups, a bit like when we looked at the wolves or in our lessons at school, when we looked at the coyotes or other animals that work in groups, okay? It means that a smaller animal working together can, can hunt down, can get a bigger piece of meat to eat, okay? So it's a fierce fish with very sharp teeth, about this big, and it lives in the Amazon River. Does anybody at home know what it is yet? Okay, now I'm gonna tell you something quite funny about this fish, okay? It has been heard before when they have put sound um, equipment into the water. It has actually been heard to bark, <laughs> a bit like a dog. Okay, a little bark, and that would come across again, bit being a bit fierce and angry, wouldn't it? Okay, so today for our second animal, we're going to be a piranha fish. Okay, one of the fiercest fish in the waters. It's cold water fish, and very sharp teeth, and they attack in big groups. Okay, they're very fast moving. So I want to see you darting around in the water. I want to see your fierce, sharp teeth, okay? And when it's time to attack, I want to see those sharp teeth gnawing, ready to go in and attack your prey. Are you ready to be piranhas? Fantastic. Very fast moving, very fast swimming. When I see you swimming in the waters, oh, what's that sound? 
They've got a good sense of smell. Swim over here and see what I can find. got a sense of something on our smell piranhas. Are we ready to attack in a big group? <gasps> Go! See their sharp teeth. So that was our second creature, our second South American creature. So for our third and an final animal that we're going to look at today, okay, we have so far done the sloth, we have done the piranha. Now this animal is beautiful, okay? This animal is also a mammal, okay, a bit like the sloth. In fact, it's not too dissimilar in size from the sloth, and a bit like the sloth, this animal likes to live in trees, okay? It does also come down on the ground because it can fend for itself. It's very fast, this animal, okay? And it likes to swing through the trees, okay? It likes to have fun with its family and its friends down on the ground, okay? It likes to have fun by throwing pieces of the plants and the fruit to each other. They like to dance a bit, okay? They eat lots of fruit and buds and leaves and flowers, okay? Sometimes they will eat insects. This animal has a special sound, okay? Now, when you read books about this animal, we often use the sound Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so most of you at ho home will have already guessed from the ooh, ooh, ooh sound that we're doing a type of monkey. Okay, but this is a special type of monkey. It has a special sound. Okay, now the sound this type of monkey makes is not an ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, it's not an ah, ah, ah either. It's a low, kind of grumbly, growling sound, okay? It sounds a little bit like a cross between a burp and a dog. <laughs> That's the only way I can explain it. After this video, please do look up with someone at home the howler monkey and the sounds that the howler monkey makes. Because today, for our last animal, we're going to be a howler monkey. And the howler monkey, doesn't howl like a wolf, or a coyote, or anything like that, like the kind of howling sound that we'd expect to hear. It howls, as I said, a bit like a burp and a dog combined, okay? It does a bit of a Can I hear you try that at home? So today, for our last animal, we're going to be howler monkeys. I want to see you swinging through the trees, okay? I want to see you hanging on your tail upside down, if you can try and do that somehow. I want to hear your howls, which are more like a growly, burpy bark. <coughs> okay? I want to see you eating your fruit, throwing it around to your friends and having fun because our last track is going to be one of the carnival sounds. Okay, so I want you to use the rhythm of this song and the features 
of our last animal of the howler monkey and combine the two together. Let's dance, let's have fun and let's be howler monkeys. Okay? Let's see you running around monkeys, jumping from tree to tree. Oh! today okay if we're at home or if we're at school is there anything that you're really thankful for today okay I want you to imagine that you're lying in the rainforest let's listen to our rainforest sounds of South America and think about how lucky we are okay think about the animals we're learning about and relax and feel the music and feel the sounds and try to feel happy, okay? To start your day, your mornings, your afternoons, your evenings, whatever time of the day it might be that you're listening, okay? And try and think of those rainforest sounds and how it might feel to be there. Now, see you next week to move to a new continent and learn about some new animals. Thank you for tuning in.